The big day of Ram Temple consecration is inching closer and we have with us former Minister of State for Tourism at the centre, bureaucrat turned politician K.G. Alphonse, who says that he welcomes the temple as a Christian and that the Ram Temple will only strengthen the bond between different communities that live in India. Thank you very much for speaking to NDTV, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, you've said that, you know, as a practicing Syrian Christian, you admire Lord Ram and you think that the temple is actually a very good thing for both India and Indians. What are your favorite associations or interpretations of the Ramayana and why do you welcome the temple? Yeah, see, I'm a staunch Christian. I'm a Syrian Christian. In fact, one of the disciples of Christ, St. Thomas, came to Kerala and converted six families in 52 AD and those families we never, they never converted anybody in this church we have become, we are now 15 percent of kerala so we are very strong catholics we are an indian church because we have been here for uh, 2000 years and i'm a strong admirer of jesus christ and uh, but i'm a huge admirer of ram and uh, why because um, christians constitute just below two percent of indian's population while 85% of the population is Hindu. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, all this religion is all bakwas, it's all a mythology. Like there are a lot of people who question and say that Ram didn't exist at all. He's a, he's a myth. It's a story. But my reply is very simple. There are a whole lot of uh, intellectuals who also say that Jesus Christ was a myth. And Christianity has survived for 2000 years. See, religion is a question of belief. If 85% of people believe that Ram was a real person and that he wasn't born in Ayodhya, this particular place, I think that belief has to be respected. And, uh, and therefore, if they want a temple for Ram, India's favorite god, after all, Ram is known as a Mariana Purushottam, means a very just and fair human being. And for somebody like that, India's favorite god, and if 85% of Indians want a temple for him, why not? Uh, so you come from Kerala and, uh, you know, that is one state where we have seen Onam being celebrated by different communities despite differences in religion. We have even seen people like Mamuti light the velaku or the lamp. Now that state has presented a model showing how sh shared cultural practices among communities um, are very important. Do you think that helps and do you think that multiple identities can exist in India without being at odds with each other? Yeah, I completely, I completely believe that all these, what makes India beautiful is the multiplicity of uh, cultures and, and practices, languages, people. I think that's what makes India so beautiful. And Ornam, as you mentioned, Ornam is celebrated in every temple, in every church, in the mosque, in every family. Like in my house, we wait every year for the Ornam, just like any Hindu family. So and we have done this for 2000 years and it's so beautiful. So we can all do this. In my own family, I mean, I have a Hindu, I have a Hindu, my daughter-in-law is a Hindu, my brother-in-law is, is a German Protestant, another brother-in-law is a Brahma Samaji, my uh, one daughter-in-law is a white American. I, I mean, all these varieties which is so beautiful. So I don't really think that we need to say, oh, this is my God and my God alone is true and somebody else's God is wrong. I think all the battles, wars in the world, most of it's happened, the killings have happened because somebody believes that, yes, my God is right, somebody else's God is wrong. I think this Ram temple and the mosque which is going to come up next to that, I think it's going to be a huge bond, a change in the thinking process when we believe, yes, we can all coexist beautifully together. So I think the Ram Mandir is a great concept. I'm so happy it's being inaugurated. Also, you're in Kochi today. Let me ask you a political question. How do you see the Prime Minister's visit to Kerala? This is his second visit in two weeks. Um, he has also hosted uh, Christian cl clergy and influential members of the Christian community at his residence during Christmas. Clearly, a lot of focus seems to be on Kerala. See, two reasons why. Because Kerala is also one of the states of India, so the Prime Minister is deeply interested in Kerala. Number two, Kerala is the most literate state in the country. Like I was a district collector of Kotaim. I pioneered the literacy movement in 1989 by making Kotaim the first 100% literate town in the country. And we are a literate place and here is an educated community, but it's a, it's a state, it's a nothing happening state for the past many years. So everybody is migrating. Earlier people used to migrate to get find jobs. Today, school children, the moment they pass school, they just disappear and they will never come back. 
So Kerala is going to be a geriatric state with only old people in another 10, 15 years. So Modi Chi, the Prime Minister, is deeply interested in Kerala because he also wanted to pull up, give a chance to Kerala and say, hey, this is not enough. Your children must find a job there. You know, and he's done such tremendous job in the past uh, 10 years you know, creating basic infrastructure for the poor and also creating, bringing dignity to people. He wants to bring the same thing to the people of Kerala. How do you see the opposition's response, sir, to, to this, to Ram Temple, calling it a political project? And if you look at Kerala, you know, both Nair and Eva organizations have issued statements welcoming the temple. Do you think this is something or the Ram Temple will help BJP finally find, you know, uh, find a foothold in Kerala? See, number one, the communists obviously are atheists. I don't think we need to listen to the atheists regarding religion at all. So just write them off. The UDF, they have that's the Congress Alliance. They have a huge problem to try to satiate the, the fundamentalist elements of the, in the Muslim community. And as you know, um, the Kerala has been the biggest recruiting center for the ISIS and the radicals in the country. And the uh, unity of the Congress Alliance has been completely silent about it. So obviously they would not want to support the concept of uh, the Ram Temple. But I think this is something which India needs badly. Why not? I mean, Ram is going to unite India. I think India's God. I mean, this whole talk about minor majority not having any right. We see only minorities count. Why? Doesn't the voice of the majority also needs to be heard? If 85% of people decide that this is what we believe, shouldn't we respect that belief also? Or democracy means, according to some intellectuals, respect only for the minorities and their views. I don't think that is the meaning of so-called secularism. I don't like such secularism. I think what we need is a country which respects people. If a very large number of people believe that this is what is, that is what it is. And I think minorities need to learn to accept. I mean, India gives freedom to the minorities to practice their religion. It's one of the countries which has absolutely amazing freedom, which it offers to minorities. Also, uh, some people do feel that a heightened sense of Hindu religiosity might send a message of exclusion to the minority communities living in India. It might even disturb our social fabric. What is your message to minority communities living in the country on the Ram Temple? I think, you see, uh, there's nothing to fear at all. Absolutely. Absolute Christianity. I mean, I belong to the, the Syrian Christian community. We are the most powerful community in, the, in, I mean, in Kerala. Maybe if you take the whole country apart from Parsis, the Syrian Christians are the most powerful, economically powerful, educated community in the country. We have survived. We will survive very, very well. Same with the Muslim community. India has a very large Muslim population. They are contributing a lot. And, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, Kerala, the Muslims are doing extremely well. I mean, if you see, they're setting up institutions, buying up properties, which never happened, setting up hospitals. I'm very happy with what is happening in the Muslim community in Kerala. In terms of uh, them becoming economically self-sufficient and well-off, of course, I don't like the radicalization part at all. But India also needs to set its thinking right. The right thinking would be, please. Just because somebody is my majority and a vast majority, please do not deny them their right. They also have their rights. And therefore, the Hindu community, if they want to build a temple for its God, why not? Why not?